Right then, fan reaction. Uh, Oxford nil, Burnley nil. Um, dull game, very dull game. Um, not a lot to shout about really. Um, very dull game, but you look at the comments on social media at the minute and I know football's a reactionary sport. I know we're all reactionary. Um, I know obviously we're all emotional, but you'd think that we'd just lost three or four nil against someone who's awful. Um, Oxford unbeaten at home at the the moment. Um, very good team, set up very well. Yes, okay, they put a lot of players behind the ball to defend. And yes, we were poor trying to break that defence down. But we're sitting fourth in the table at the moment. You know, we're, we're still... I think this is like week four now of these new players. It still takes time to gel. I think a lot of people need to realise where we're at at the moment. We're not going to... I know I may have said it a few weeks ago on Turfcast, but we're probably not going to run away with the league like we did a few years ago. But it's a good point. We've got another clean sheet on the board and we're still in it. You know, you, you look at these comments online at the moment, it, it's as if we've just been battered and we haven't. We were much the better side. We were good defensively. I think, obviously, we've kept the clean sheet. It'll get there. We'll get there. Just not today, just wasn't our day. And fair play to Oxford for the plan, the game plan that they had. You know, they're a team that were well and truly expecting to be down the bottom of the table at the end of the season, with us being up here at the end of the season. And they played their game plan brilliantly. Um, it's obvious we need something to break down teams like these because this has been our issue so far this season. We've seen it today. We saw it against Blackburn. We saw it against Portsmouth. We struggled to break down teams. And that is where we're obviously screaming out for a number 10 or a different striker. And I think no disrespect to Foster, but he isn't our striker that's going to go get the goals to get us promoted. He's too slow. He's not good enough in possession. And I don't think he's with it. I think his head was turned in the summer. And I don't think he wants to play for the shirt. I may be wrong. And if I am, I apologise. But at the moment, that's how I feel about him. And we're effectively playing with 10 men when he does start. Um, so for me... He needs dropping. I know everyone thinks J-Rod's too old, but he'll put in the passion, he'll put in the effort, which I'm not seeing from Foster at the moment. Um, obviously, like I say, no disrespect um, to Foster. He's not the only player, <coughs> excuse me, he's not the only player who wasn't at it today. Um, obviously, breaking down teams in defence isn't just his job. And that's why I think we need that 10. The midfield of Hannibal, Brownhill and Cullen, as much as we all like Hannibal because of the antics he gets up to, I just don't think he quite works there at this moment, especially when we are struggling to break teams down. He did look up for it today. Um, he looked very creative and he looked good, but he's not the player that we need there at this moment in time. I would quite like to see Cullen and Laurent in that defensive midfield and push Josh further forward. Or even if Fleming's fit, I'd like to see Fleming playing in that 10 role. Um, but yeah, the game, like I say, not much to shout home about. Um, I think we could play till Tuesday night and it'd still, it'd still be nil-nil. Um, but like I say, that's are breaking teams down but also how Oxford played I thought Oxford were brilliant in their game plan um you know we've done this years and years we've played like that for years and got the results so you can't really knock anyone for playing like that um but yeah it, it wasn't the greatest of games but we've got a point 
you know, a point away from home at a ground where I think they've only conceded one goal. So that sort of tells you everything. It's not just about us. It's about how Oxford play as well. Um, but yeah, we, we, we're we solid defensively at the moment. And I think that's obvious what Parker has come in and wants to do. Um, it's, it's quite clear that he's not, not that he's a defensive coach, but it's clear that he wants to make sure we're not there to concede silly goals, which obviously we were doing last year. Um, so he's obviously come in to tighten that up at the back, but it's just our attack that's a little bit worrying. Not overly worrying, because, like I say, we're still up there. We've still got the attacking threat. It's the moments of quality that have got us through games at the moment rather than being able to break teams down. And we'll get there and we will gel. And when we do, we'll be able to break teams down. But at the moment, we're not doing. We've still only, I think, seven games into the season. It'll come. You know, we, we've, we've got games coming up now. We've got the big hard games out of the way. We've got games coming up now where... There are no easy games in the championship, but these are games where we are expecting to get points. And I think a lot of people may feel like today's two points dropped, but it's a good point away from home at a side who are set up fantastically to defend what they've got. And I think you could tell they were happy with the point within the last 10, 15 minutes. Um, but yeah. It's a solid point away from home. It's a clean sheet. We haven't lost. We're still fourth in the league. We've got Plymouth on Tuesday night, which is another very winnable game. Um, you know, we're, we're not down and out. I think a lot of people, like I say, it's a reactionary sport. It's emotional. But we've got to remember where we are in the season and what's happened so far this season to get us here um especially in the transfer window and things like that um but yeah like i say that there's not much to say about the match other than that because it was it wasn't the greatest of games obviously we've we've had a couple of sitters that we should have scored from like i say i don't i don't want to call individual players out because today quite a lot of players weren't at it um, but obviously Foster's missed a chance that he should be putting away. Um, Sam Yanto's missed a chance that I don't know how he skied it. Um, Hatonji's come on off the bench. Brownhill's tried to get his head on a Cole Yosho cross, which he probably should have done better with, but then Hatonji's just fired it wide when it's looked so much easier to score. Um, so yeah, with. We've had some chances today. We just weren't at it. It was hard to break Oxford down, but they just couldn't do it. Um, and yeah, I I don't like I say, I don't want to worry just yet. Um, we're sitting fourth in the league. We've still got this. We've still got this. Um, but yeah, we we go on Tuesday. Big game against Plymouth. I expect a reaction from the boys, um, and I'm sure we'll get one. I expect a reaction from Parker, and I'm sure we'll get one. Um, I'm certain that there will be changes on Tuesday night, um, potentially up front. I'd be very surprised to see Foster starting up front again for us on Tuesday. Um, I'd be surprised if we see that same midfield three of Hannibal, Cullen and Brownhill. Um and I wouldn't would be surprised if we see the same back back line. Um I'd I'd fully expect big changes from Parker on Tuesday night. Um but yeah, like I say, there's not really much more to say about that match other than how poor it was. Um but I do just want to single out Des Buckingham as well, the Oxford manager, um just for his attire today. Um there's a charity called Boys Get Sad Too, and basically they support mental health and people who are struggling with it, specifically men. Um, 
and obviously the tragic passing of I can't remember his name, I do apologise, but the tragic passing of the Oxford lad, um, who we had a minute's applause for today. I don't know if people noticed this, but Buckingham had the Boys Get Sad 2 hoodie on today. And that just automatically made me like him a bit more, just because, obviously, you know, I think it's quite well documented now with how I've struggled with my own mental health. Um, obviously, we've got Lyle, who's struggled with his um and i think it's still out there as a bit of a stigma that you know mental health is a big thing and there are still all these charities that go out but people do still struggle and it can affect you no matter who you are and what level you're at um so i just think seeing a football manager wearing something like that the boys get to get sad too, hoodie. Seeing people in the mainstream media wearing things like that, highlighting it, just helps massively, especially if you are struggling because it's really hard to explain, but if you are struggling, you need things like football or, you know, cricket or sport or a hobby to take it away from you and to help you when you are feeling down and if you're being signposted to charities like that when you are doing those hobbies I think that's absolutely brilliant and fair play to to Buckingham for that so yeah um, I just wanted to highlight it because obviously no one should suffer on their own no one should be struggling um, and obviously, if you are, please reach out to someone and get the help that you do need. Um, but yeah, on to Tuesday night now. Plymouth at home. I'm expecting a good game. Expecting big changes from Parker and the boys. And I do think we'll get three points. But yeah, just remember where we're at. Just remember, you know, we're still fourth in the league. Just remember, we're on. We've only lost one game all season so far. Um, and we can still do it. So, yeah, don't get too disheartened. The fact that we're nil-nil, still a good point away from home. It's still a clean sheet. Doesn't matter if it's the team that we are expected to beat. Every game in this league is going to be a tough game. Up the Clarets. <laughs>